Welcome to the tutorial, Storing the Character in the Library. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take the deformation rig of the Karate Rabbit and store it in the library as a template so that you can reuse it again and again. Um, not only will I show you how to store the full character, but also its different views, uh, key poses, and certain singular elements such as just the head. So to begin, we have to go to the network view. And the first thing I'm going to do is delete this deformation group that I kept around just to use as an example. Then I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut either Command or Control A to select all. So I'm using a Mac, so it's Command A. And then I'm going to use Command or Control G to group. So in my case, it's Command G. The next thing I'm going to do is rename my element. So I'm going to name this Karate Rabbit Master and then close. So you may have noticed that this group um, has an in port, so this green node right here, but that there is no out port. And of course this is quite inconvenient because if we want to drag and drop uh, this group as a template into a scene where there's other elements that already exist, how will we then connect this element to the composite? Well, it's because we actually need to add a multi-port out into our group. So let's re-enter our group and come down here to where the composite is along the display. And then let's find our module library. And let's scroll all the way down to the All tab so, because we know everything's there. And we're looking for our multi-port out. So I'm going to drag and drop that in here. And then I'm going to connect the composite to the multi-port out. And now if we return back to the top, we can see that the Karate Master group now has an out port. So I'm going to go back to the library now. And actually in the timeline, if we uncollapse the Karate Rabbit Master group, um, what we can do is first take this red bar and drag it across to shorten the scene length. And that's so that there are no extra cells or extra frames in the scene except for exactly what we need. The next thing that we need to do is add a keyframe at the start of every view. So the best way to do this is actually to collapse the deformation body group because it's the group that contains all the other groups. Um, and to click on the first frame, and you can obviously insert a keyframe in several different ways. You can right click and select insert keyframe. You can use the keyboard shortcut command F6 on Mac or control F6 on Windows. So I'll do that. Um, another thing you can do is use the button right here, the add keyframe or insert keyframe button that belongs to the timeline view toolbar. So if we uncollapse the deformation group for the Karate Rabbit's body, you can see that now there is um, in fact a keyframe that goes all the way through the first column. So we need to do that again for the three-quarter profile view. So in fact, you can also do it from the Karate Master level, it doesn't really matter which one. Um, so I'm going to click on this button, if we uncollapse, we see that now there's a keyframe on the first frame of the three-quarter profile view, and let's do it for the last view, which is the cider profile view. And once again, we can see it's there. So another thing that we want to get rid of is the fact that these are motion keyframes. We want this to be stop motion keyframes. So I'm going to select the first frame again, collapse my layer, right click on it, and select set stop motion keyframe. Or once again, you can use the keyboard shortcut that's indicated beside. And I'm going to do the same thing for this keyframe, as well as for the last keyframe. So if we uncollapse our group again, we can see that now there is no longer um, any interpolation or tweening between the keyframes. So if it hasn't already been done, now would also be a good time to do the Z-nudging for your character's parts. So that's to push back uh, body parts that shouldn't be forward um, and to bring forward body parts that should sit in front. Uh, we already did that in a previous tutorial, so I'm not going to get into it. But if you haven't done it yet, now would be uh, the optimal time to do that. 
So after you've finished doing all the Z-nudging for your character, you can collapse your character again in the timeline, um, and then go to your library, and I'm just going to expand this part of the library, and I'm going to go to the stage library, so you have the symbols, templates, and stage library folder. Uh, your setup might be a little bit different. And I'm going to right click on the stage library and select write to modify. Then I'm going to right click on it again and select new folder. And then if you uncollapse the stage library, you can see that there's a new folder that's been created. So I'm going to right click on the new folder and select rename folder. And I'm going to rename this one uh, Karate Rabbit so we know all the templates belong to the Karate Rabbit will be in this folder. Then what I'm going to do is select the Karate Master group in the network view, uh, use controller command C to copy, then click in the right side of the library view with the Karate Rabbit folder still selected and use command or control V to paste it. So right away, a rename window comes up, so you can rename your template. You want to keep the .tpl and just delete the first part and rename it as you will. So I'm going to rename it Karate Rabbit underscore Master to match my group name and say OK. So the next thing we want to do is create masters for all the different views. So the front view, the three-quarter profile, and the profile view. So to do this, what we're going to do is select our template in the library view, copy it by using Command or Control C, and then paste it again. You're going to get the rename dialog box come up again. And what we're going to do is rename it Karate Rabbit Full Front and say OK. And then what we're going to do is right click on the Karate Rabbit Full Front and select Edit Template. So now that we're in the template, what we can do is uncollapse our deformation group. So you can see it here. Um, so you, we have everything we had before. I'm just going to recollapse that. Um, and then what we're going to do is select all the cells after the first frame by using shift and then clicking on the last cell, which exists on frame 20, and then hitting the delete key. Now if we go back to frame 1 and we uncollapse our group, we can see that only the keyframes and the drawings for the first column still exist. And that's all we need for the front view. So the last two things we need to do is shorten the scene length. So we do that by grabbing this red bar and dragging it across. So we're going to drag it all the way to frame one so that we don't have any extra frames um, in our template. And then we're going to rename our group and I'm going to rename it to Karate Rabbit Full Front. Then click on the Save button. And now we can just close this template scene. Okay, so we're going to repeat the exact same process uh, to create a template for the three-quarter profile and profile views. So let's select our Karate Master template, copy it, paste it, rename it, say OK, then right click on it and select Edit Template. However, this time, instead of selecting all the frames after the first frame, what we're going to do is select the frames before the second keyframe and hit delete, and then select all the frames after the second keyframe and hit delete. Now if we uncollapse the Karate Master group and the Deformation body group, we can see that there's only a single column of keyframes and frames that exist. 
So we're going to collapse it again, and what we want to do is drag that entire column to the first frame. So we can always uncollapse to verify that it's there, and in fact it is. Then we're going to drag this red bar to shorten our scene length, and we're going to rename our group once again. We're going to save. And then we can, of course, close our template scene. So let's do that one more time. I'm going to copy, paste, rename. So you can name it side or profile, whichever you prefer. Then we're going to edit the template. This time, of course, we're going to select all the frames before the last keyframe and hit delete, and then all the frames after the last keyframe and hit delete. You can once again verify that this column of frames and keyframes is there. And then we're going to drag it to the first frame. You can always verify that it's there once again. We see it there. And then we're going to drag this red bar to the first frame and then rename our group. And then hit save. And then close our template. Okay, so now we're going to create key poses but this time we're going to do it a little differently. Instead of working with the network view, what we're going to do is take keyframes from the timeline view. And the reason that we've been working with the network view up until now is that generally when you take things from the timeline view, you're not assured that all of the connections made in the network view will stay intact. That's why it's good to make all of these views available um, as templates created in the network. So we know for sure that they will be compatible with any other network that they are dropped into. But the key poses are a different thing. So what we can do to make uh, a template for the key pose of the front view is click on the first keyframe here in the timeline view, then drag it to the right side of the library and release. So once again, we're able to rename our template and this time I'm going to name it Karate Rabbit Front KP for key pose and say OK. I'm going to do the same thing for the three-quarter view. Drag, drop, and then rename to Karate Rabbit three-quarter KP. And one last time for the profile view. and say OK. So the last thing we want to do is actually create a template of just the head of the Karate Rabbit from the perspective of the three views. So if we uncollapse our Karate Master group and then the deformation body group, we can look for just the head group, which is the group right here. If you remember, we did not apply a deformation on the head. So what we can do is select the first key pose again and drag and drop it into the library view. Then rename it to something appropriate and we can do the same thing for the head from the three-quarter profile perspective. And one last time for the profile view. So now let's save this. 
And then let's open a new scene to test our templates. So we can do that by clicking on this button here, the Create New Scene button. Uh, I'll call this Test Template Templates and say Create. Okay, so now if we go into our stage library, we uncollapse it and we go into the Karate Rabbit folder, we can take any of these templates um, from the library and drag and drop them into either the camera view or into the left side of the timeline. So I'm going to take the full front and do that. And as you can see, it's automatically been added to the network view and it's also been automatically connected to the composite. And that works for whether you drop the template in the camera view or the left side of the timeline view. However, if you drag this template to the network view, oddly enough, it does not get connected to the composite. And uh, our reasoning behind that, or the reason that I think that happens, is because if you're working in the network view, the software assumes that you have enough knowledge of the network view to know that you, you have to connect it yourself. So I'm actually going to unconnect that and delete this from the network view. So the next thing we have to do is extend the exposure of this template because right now it just exists for one frame. So we can do that by clicking on the desired frame that we would like to extend uh, the exposure to. So in my case it's frame 40. Right click on it and select extend exposure or you could use the keyboard shortcut F5. So now let's go down to our, our group and uncollapse it so that we can see that the frames do indeed go all the way across to frame 40. So say now that you're animating and you've created a bunch of uh, transformations and uh, you've animated along this sequence here and you get about up to frame 20 and you decide that you'd like to swap poses and have the rabbit facing uh, the three-quarter profile view. So what you can do is go back into your library and select the three-quarter key pose and then drag it and drop it at frame 20. And now if you flip back and forth, your character changes views or changes position automatically. And that's super useful because if you did not have a template to do that, you would have to go through all of these body parts individually and swap them so that the leg, the body, uh, the head, all of these things, uh, you would swap the drawing for the three-quarter version of all of these drawings. And of course, that would take a very long time because there are so many drawings. Um, and then say you continue to animate and all of a sudden at frame 30 uh, the, the karate rabbit turns his head to the side to the profile view. So we know that we created our, our head templates as well. So let's take our karate rabbit side head template and drag it down. And as you might notice you're not able to drop this template anywhere. We see the white negative sign. However, if you continue downwards all of a sudden you'll see the same green circle with the white plus that you saw when you dragged your first two templates into the timeline. And so this lets you know that you can release the mouse and drop your template there. And the reason that you're able to drop your template down here and not up here is because what the software was doing is that it was looking for an identical structure. So our head begins here in the timeline layer stack and so our template was allowed to be uh, deposited here as well. And that's the one thing you have to be careful of when you're creating templates is that they have to be identical. If there's even one layer missing or one connection that's off, the software will not accept this um, as a template that can be swapped. And I actually did a pretty good job of dropping the head, but you can also um, adjust it a little bit as well so that it's perfectly in place or in place as you would like it. So that's it for the tutorial storing a character in the library. Stay tuned for the next tutorial manipulating a deformer to create animation.